next guest is Dr. Lydia Yarlett, who's a medical director in the NHS, a co-founder of Forward Clinical. Um, she's going to be talking on communication between medical staff over mobile apps and forward app presentation. Welcome, Dr. Yarlett. so much. It's great to be here today. It's interesting to be introduced as Dr. Yarlot. I'm, I'm Lydia and this is Lucinda. We're juniors. We've been in the NHS for two years, so we come with very fresh eyes. And we're here to talk about our clinical communications platform, Forward. Um, so, Okay, um, so this project was really born out of frustration. My first year in St. George's Hospital, I was really stunned to find that we're still using bleeps and pages in the 21st century. This is 60s technology, it's inefficient, it compromises patient care and at least the delays not only with patients but also with clinicians, it's very inefficient. WhatsApp, most of us are using WhatsApp as a workaround, it's completely non-secure, shouldn't be used to share patient data and again it's mixed up with your, social, with your other social <laughs> contacts. Um, handover lists, so most doctors will carry around a, a paper list of patients which they annotate that's out of date as soon as you put it in your back pocket, probably lose it in the canteen. We wanted to create a, a digital solution for all these things. So you might describe me as lucky or unlucky. My fiance is a technology entrepreneur and that's how this came about. We couldn't really help but do this. Um, a little bit more about the problems that we, we face as clinicians in communication. So firstly, there's the way that things are very fragmented and unreliable in hospitals. You can't necessarily get hold of the person you, you need at the right time. You have no idea who's the renal physician on call for that day or who's the tissue viability nurse specialist. That process takes a long time and it, and it wastes time. And as a result, people are using workarounds. And the other major problem is this paper-based handover list and task management. So once you've done your ward round, and your team disperses, maybe one of you is in clinic, one of you is in theatre, you then have no way of managing that, that workflow and your consultant has no idea what's going on with the junior team as well. Okay, um, so we wanted to work out whether our experience was universal or unique, so we did a little bit of research and we asked about 120 doctors across the UK um, how they were communicating and um, what they thought would be a, a good idea to, to solve some of these challenges. The first thing, the first really interesting thing we found was how much doctors communicate. Okay, so it's about 40 interactions a day. And a lot of those are currently over the bleep system, but also going to physically find your colleagues. That's how I spent much of my F1 year, running around the hospital to different departments. Um, we found that 89% of doctors are using WhatsApp as a workaround. It's, it's probably higher than that. 94% um, of them thought that a, a proper, secure communications tool would be useful or very useful to them. And we tried to quantify the amount of time wasted on inefficient communication, um, and it's conservatively estimated from consultant to F1 at about an hour per day. So. Technically, that could give us 10% more doctor time if we were to solve this problem. So a little bit about um, uh, the other thing, sorry, is that we don't have time for this. So we don't have enough doctors in the UK. We certainly don't have enough doctors in most other countries in the world. We, we can't afford to be wasting time on inefficient communication. So yeah, a little bit about Forward. So we wanted to share with you a, a few of the features of our app. So um, the first thing we set about creating was a way of instant messaging that is secure. So through Forward, you can securely message individuals. You can securely message your team. Um, everything is encrypted. Um, nothing is stored on the phone. And looking forward to next year, we're also, we've also created a platform that's uh, GDPR compliant um, to make sure we're kind of up to date in terms of where we need to be with confidentiality. Okay, and the other thing which I've alluded to is, is task management. So it can be very difficult to manage the, the priority of your tasks as a clinician, and particularly a junior doctor. Tasks get assigned on the ward round, they get scribbled on a piece of paper, um, tasks get missed, that's a, a patient safety concern. So this logs task 
per patient and per team, and you can prioritize those in, in order of urgency, and you can also track when they're completed. We've also created uh, an in-app patient list, so rather than having the piece of paper, um, which I'm sure we've all heard stories of them being left in car parks or on buses and goodness knows where else, um, this can be kept on your phone. There's a couple of advantages we see to this. Um, one is that we can enter the data onto the phone by scanning the QR code, which lots of patients over here now have on their wristbands, um, which means that that data is being pulled directly from their, their <coughs> hospital documents, um, which reduces errors in transcribing that data onto the list. Um, it also means that patient lists can be kept up to date um, over the course of a day, so it's quite common that a patient may be admitted to your team in the middle of a day, and unless you've got um, an efficient way of kind of adding that to the list, that patient could be missed by members of your team, so it's, it's keeping that up to date. Yeah. Okay, and the other thing we have is, is who to get in contact with. So um, uh, one really annoying thing about not knowing who's in the hospital at the particular time is that um, you end up trying to contact people who are actually not there. Their bleeps may be on a shelf. You're bleeping someone that's, that's gone off to do a clinic somewhere. So we have different stages. There's on-call, available, and unavailable. And this also gets around the problem of being disturbed when, when you're not at work. So whilst we've built this platform for healthcare professionals to use, um, our primary concern will always be patient safety, and that includes the safety of their data and keeping everything um, that's being inputted to the app confidential. Um, so there's multiple layers to that security. The first is that to be able to have the app at all, you've got to have a, an email that we've whitelisted. So that could be an NHS email, a trust email, uh, doctors.net, anything that says that you're a registered healthcare professional. Um, the next step to that is, whilst lots of us have a pin on our phone, we've also put a secondary pin on the app so that if you um, are like me and tend to put your phone down places, including the ward, that um, anybody that picks up that phone can't instantly get into the, the app and see any patient data. This is quite a wordy slide, and, and if anyone's got any questions on it, I'm happy to talk about it afterwards. Um, but essentially, information governance and information security are key to what we do, um, and we're quite proud. We've put a lot of effort in in the last year into making sure that we um, cover all of this. So uh, we're now an NHS IG toolkit compliant and, and soon to be certified app. Um, we're GDPR compliant, and this is just a list of several of the organisations we've had to work with to make that a reality. Okay, so where have we got to at the moment? We're at a very early stage, and that's why we're still really actively seeking involvement and feedback from the wider clinical community. Um, we're in use in UCLH critical care, which is really exciting. Um, at the hospital that, that I've been working at, Medway, we're trust-wide across the hospital, so people are using it as a communications and referrals platform. Um, the MDT, so nurses, dietitians, physios are on board. We've recently got biochemistry on board as well so that doctors can directly talk to the lab. Um, we're launching right now in Oxford um, and we've got a few other trusts in the pipeline as well. Okay, so um, a little bit of feedback that we've got so far. We're definitely not perfect yet, we're still in development, but we've had some really encouraging feedback from consultants saying that it allows them to keep track of their junior team, what's going on with their patients when they're not physically present. Juniors like it because they can um, scan the patient straight into the app and then talk about them safely, which is a large part of their workload day to day. So we can talk about forward for hours, but actually the best way to help you understand what we're doing is to download the app yourselves. So um, it's in the App Store, it's in the Play Store for Android. It's completely free and always will be for anyone that's sort of working on the front line as a clinician. Um, we've set up a little bit of a competition so you can try and get the most out of the app. So what we ask you to do is to have a look at these three pictures. Um, they're all landmarks around London, um, but no more clues. You can find me in the app, so I'm Lucinda Scharf. Um, you can find me in the full directory that's on there. Um, send me a one-to-one -one message with what you think these three locations are. And at the end of the day, we'll, we're in the coffee break this afternoon, we'll select someone at random and we've got a bit of a prize. Um, 
we're trying to build a community. As uh, This isn't supposed to be just an app. This is an improvement in the way that we communicate and, and clinicians uh, leading that change in the NHS. Um, so we'd like you to be part of that. We want your feedback. Um, we've got a growing community on social media, Facebook and Twitter as well. So we'd love for you to download. We'd love for you to kind of be part of that growing community if this is something you're passionate about as well. Thank you. Thank you. Lydia and Lucinda. Lucinda. Right, okay, I think we've got plenty of time for questions. And we've got lots of hands up. Um, I'm going to start with the ladies this time, I'm afraid. So we'll come, I can see you guys. So we've got a couple of hands for the ladies at the back. Who put their hand up first? Yes, please. Yeah. Hello, um, I just want to say fascinating presentation. Uh, really exciting to see this. Um, However, uh, for some of for those of you who don't know, I mean, um, in, the NHS got hacked earlier this year, so I'm just wondering what your backup plan is. I know you're in the mode of development, but have you thought about that as we've got an increasing number of hackers? Um, sure, sure. Oh, well, it's, it's quite interesting because um, the, the tests that we've put ourselves through are actually much greater than the tests that the NHS software puts itself through. So that the malware attack earlier this year was because NHS computers weren't actually updated with the latest antiviral software. Um, we've, we've been tested for penetration, so can we be hacked? And the answer is that at the highest level, we, we can't be. Although your, your, your question is still absolutely relevant. What happens if the system goes down? And I guess the answer to that would be that there, there's always another way of contacting someone, even if it means going to physically find them. Currently, we don't have a system like this, so we're using workarounds already. In an emergency, we'll probably still be using bleeps for the near to medium term future. Okay, um, So this is ten intended to augment the current state of clinical communication rather than replace it completely. But we hope that as we, as we grow and as we put into development all the things that we want to put into development, we'll become a, a, a much more reliable platform than what we've got at the moment. Okay, was there another question at the back from one of the... No, okay. Uh, we'll, we've got three counts. Yes, well, there's a mic. We'll come, we'll come down. Yes. We'll let you start. You've got a mic in your hand. Yes, yes, go ahead. Very, very brief question. I think a, a very good presentation, and that is more to do with the future uh, generations and uh, something to be used in in the long long run. My question is that you have mentioned about uh, doctors uh, .net. As far as NHS is concerned, it does not uh, uh, endorse that as a secure uh, site where you can exchange patient patient data. The only one that is is an NHS uh, .net account itself. Yes. Yeah, so it it actually having the the email address it doesn't end up getting receiving any of the patient data itself. It's just a way of us saying this is a doctor. They have a GMC number um, and and allowing them to download the app. So none of the data from the app ever ends up on the email address. But yeah, thanks. So uh, I'm uh, from America, and this is a huge uh, national patient safety focus for us as well. Uh, one of the biggest things that we are um, kind of uh, up against is uh, how do you communicate across. Uh, shifts, so oh. handoffs are extremely important. Yeah. I think if I heard you correctly, you said you could include this in your app, which I've, it's the first time I've heard that. Secondly, uh, does this operate in different clinical uh, or uh, e-record environments? Because that's an issue we have, that if it's a one kind of an uh, e-record which doesn't talk to the second kind of e-record, how do you kind of communicate between the two e-records? Does that is yeah, sure. interoperability? So, so, so firstly, we, we do tackle handover. Um, but we replace the, the Microsoft Word or Excel list that doctors carry with them. We do not replace the patient record, and that's a really important distinction because actually we, we've thought a lot about integration. We, we don't want to integrate at the moment because the software that the NHS is using is, is really disparate across different sites. It doesn't allow every single clinician to communicate with every other clinician. And, and that's what we want to be able to achieve. We're up to date. Unfortunately, the NHS isn't up to date in terms of which software it's using. So we'd be compromising ours 
by integration, if that makes sense. Thank you very much, Dr. Sohil Jafai. Just a brief comment to Mariam's question there. Uh, she asked about the hacking. It was the Windows XP computers which got hacked. Hmm. Windows XP, Microsoft stopped supporting them three years ago. NHS did not update their micro operating system. Hmm. So there was a big loophole, and that's why the computers got hacked. Hmm. And Windows XP has been eliminated. Pakistan is even more safe country than Britain, because they have Windows 7 in most of the computers where I'm installing telemedicine. <laughs> Coming to questions. Uh, I thank you first of all for responding to the invitation. Uh, I met you at the London Digital Health Show where we are partners. Uh, internet. I worked in Medway Hospital as a consultant. Mm. I know in theaters at the basement, in theater one, mm. there is no internet. Mm. So your app needs internet. That's my first question. And mm. I know you have answers as well because we, we, we discussed that. Yeah. The second thing is the business model. You said it's all free. Mm -hmm. Is it free sustainable in that business model or do you have a plan in future? Thank you. Two very good questions, thank you. Um, first, about, about dark spots for internet. Um, so, what we, what we, our thinking process is that people are using WhatsApp anyway, right? They, they, 90 percent of doctors are using it for all their clinical communication. So somehow they're getting internet. Um, white, hospitals are improving their Wi-Fi networks. But doctors already walk out of theatres every so often to check their messages anyway. That's just how, how people have started to work. Um, interestingly, though, we, we do have an idea about something called mesh networks, which might be very interesting in the future if we wanted to work in, in for example, low-resource settings where they don't necessarily have 4G, although most developing countries do have good mobile networks. You can create a mesh network with, with no internet whatsoever. And that's something that we might choose to focus on developing later. So, so it's a good question. Um, the second question about our business model is that genuinely we don't know. OK? This is a problem. We, f we feel like it has to be solved. Um, it's a, it was a very, very fortuitous meeting of, of me and my partner. I think it's very unusual to have a doctor and a, a serial technology entrepreneur working together. Um, we felt like the problem was so big that if we solved it, the business model would sort itself out. <laughs> um, we've, we've kind of proved this out by um, gaining investment from a few different sources. And we, we have a number of ideas for the future. They mainly involve SaaS platforms for hospitals. Thank you.